what I think is interesting is that you've, um, you know, you've you've done a, a, some projects of your own and you've done some projects uh, with other people. But it's still that struggle, even though you've had this early success, it's still that struggle to get your vision through the gate, I suppose. So with Ant-Man and with Tintin to an extent, you've, you've put a yeah. lot of work. And it's true, those... I was on the periphery of those, I was just a writer on those productions. Yeah. So uh, str struggle, I was talking about struggle. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've struggled a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, well, it's not. It's you know, everything's massive uh, franchises, isn't it? Yeah. So it's difficult to get original stuff going, and also the stuff I do is f sort of fantasy action adventure, which isn't that cheap. So you're trying to raise money, uh, and it costs a lot of money to make a film, and you've got to convince people to give it to you. And if you don't, if you're not a video game adaptation or a sequel or something. Then it's a bit more of a struggle. Yeah, and 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 also you have made struggle. that you've made that choice <laughs> to try, you know, which is unusual. I think because I've just got so fed up. I used to love going to the cinema, and I, I realised I don't go much anymore because I'm mm. not that into. I've seen a lot of the Marvel films, but I'm kind of realised I'm not that into it. And that's every film. Whereas I've heard you talking about this, but you know, there aren't any films now which are just, there are hardly any films which are just a film. That you can there, watch that's from not. Start I wouldn't say that's strictly true. Tar yeah. is very good. Yeah. Uh, I thought Triangle of Sadness was really good. Babylon is worth watching. Like, there's... <laughs> <laughs> it's worth watching. It's kind of a little wonky. But at least it, he's trying to make a film. But I think when you're, if you're trying to do a, a, a film that's your vision, that's an independent idea that isn't based on a superhero, yes. existing superhero <laughs> video game, it's very hard to get that through the gates. Uh, yes. So, you know, you've managed to do it with two or three times. Twice times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then a Netflix show, yeah. And yeah. I, I'll keep on going. You know, Edgar and I have this production company called Complete Fiction, and that's what we're going to try and do. We're going to continue to try and make original British commercial films, you yeah. know, with fun shit happening in them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so we'll see how we get on. Yeah. It's, but, you know, I think it's interesting for us as, as a writer on any level... You sort of feel like if the writer goes to Hollywood and is having writing films with Steven Spielberg. That's a degree of success, but uh, that you know. But it's it's felt very much like writing for Radio Four <laughs> for me. My, th that you'll come up with an idea and you won't be able to get it off the ground, or you'll come up with an idea yeah, and then yeah. someone else comes and takes it away from you and and yeah, does some, it's not something that dissimilar it. from my experience yeah. with Blunder. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's nice it's nice to know that it's the same on every on every yeah, level. It is, and I've been very lucky. Basically, Edgar, it was I wouldn't have worked on either Ant Man or Tintin without Edgar. He was. I've basically been helped through my life by short, hairy men. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Adam Buxton, and then Edgar Wright. Yeah. But then everyone's short compared to me. <laughs> but no, they, they, you know, Adam was amazingly kind to me to bring him on when he got uh, hired to present Takeover TV. He called me up and said, would you help me out? And then Edgar was incredibly kind to me when he called me up and said, do you know anything about Tintin? Uh, and it turned out it was to write the film. Yeah. So I've been very lucky with with uh, to have generous friends. And becoming a director, going into directing, is obviously as a writer as well. Hey, you're a short, hairy man. I am. I, should, I can help. I can. <laughs> what help. have you got for me? I can get you. <laughs> you can come on this podcast as often as you like. Um, <laughs> I haven't got. I'm making some. I'm making some stupid sketches. Yeah, you could be in. Um, but it, it's. I, I being a director is never interested me as a I'm, I'm kind of interested in writing and before. cut yeah <laughs> back to ones let's go what, again what is it what is it that that because it, it seems you know it seems like a lot a lot of work it seems like um you know if you if you're in if you're creative which you obviously are it feels like i don't know, do you, what 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 attracts you to directing because i don't and i it, it, the, it, i think it's the same as you you have an idea and then you want it you, you want, you want to make it so you do whatever you need to do to make it. Yeah. It's good fun directing, actually. I really like it. And it's not that dissimilar to when we made uh, little parodies of films with stuffed toys. <laughs> uh, genuinely, you know, the, the, the lighting and the camera positioning and the cutting, it's, it's, it's just, you know, that's the way to approach it, really. Not, yeah. not get freaked out by the size of everything. By, the, you know, by the, all the people and everything. Yeah, well, I would be freaked out by that. Nah, that you'd bit. be fine after a bit. Listen, anyone can do it. Seriously. <laughs> but is it is it about understanding? Because like some people you feel like want to be in control of everything because they don't trust other people to get it right. Is it about making sure just saying 
you, you're doing that job. Go away. No, and do no, it. I think you're silly to do that because yeah. you're always like, if you think about it, a, a director like a, a director that works a lot will make a movie every three years. Yeah. Whereas the crews you're working with will make three movies a year. So everyone you're working with is much more experienced than you, pretty much. Yeah. So you'd be silly not to get their help. Um, and, and it's weird. Whatever you ask them to do, they'll always have done it before. You can. It's very hard. This says a man who's made two films. <laughs> but it's very hard to come up with a thing that they don't know how to do or they haven't done before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because they're so experienced and there have been so many movies made, especially in this country. You know, all those movies I saw when I was a kid, we, we saw when we were kids, all those big Hollywood movies like Superman and Raiders and Star Wars, they're all shot here. Aliens, yeah. they're all shot here. And all the crews were from here. So this is a really cool place to be to make those films because you don't have any of the sort of swaggery Hollywood nonsense. You've just got British people in shorts wearing <laughs> Skyfall T-shirts on their mobile phones. <laughs> uh, swearing a lot. Yeah. That's all it is. Good, yeah. And you kind of do, you prefer that you can, I mean, you live opposite your, the house you were born in, right? You've bought yes. The, you've bought the house and your, your parents still live in that house, yes. I believe. Yeah. So you obviously kind of like where you've come from i mean that's attack the block is set in that part of london that, yes that uh, that you grew up in um is it the, the thing like uh, when you've written something so you've written attack the block and i saw you talk i saw a thing on youtube about talking about the cut scenes from attack the block and you had to make a you had to make a decision to cut 10 pages of the script yeah that just was, due yeah. to due to budget right yeah there was a whole like errol flynn style sequence where they where they climbed up the outside of the block and they were fighting uh, aliens while dangling from the balcony right. and stuff. And yeah, but it's often quite useful to write things like that because they can become sacred cows. You know, when you're writing them, you kind of think, yeah, I'll never get to do this. <laughs> but then when the budget crunch comes, you, you know, you can just get rid of them. But I did have to think of a whole different way to get, uh, to get, them up to that room the the logistics had to had to be reorganized um but it it ended up actually that's what made if you remember the film that's what that's what ended up with jody whittaker's character going into uh john boyega's character's bedroom first and that's a really good bit of the film so yeah. that that happened because of uh out of necessity really right. rejigging it and that film was inspired by you genuinely being carjacked yes how was that? How was the experience? Not of being very carjacked? nice. <laughs> <laughs> we were. It was a misty winter evening, and all the windows of our Fiat Punto were steamed up. <laughs> yeah. And me and my girlfriend, now wife, had we just got into the car, I think, and we closed the doors, and the doors opened again, both of our doors from either side right. simultaneously, and there was a group of young hooded gentlemen wearing masks <laughs> who invited us to step out of the car, <laughs> um, and. They, yeah, so I just gave them everything, as you do under those circumstances. And they got in the car and drove off. Wow. Um, but it was, the thing was, it was like a scene out of a Western. Uh, it was really cinematic, because they looked like ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> and the lighting was kind of that amazing <laughs> London orange street light, yeah, you know? Yeah. And it was what they call in the, in the movies a wet down. When you shoot at night in film, you always wet everything down so that the light reflects. You'll notice it if you watch films. Uh, that sort of, um, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, that John Carpenter, Walter Hill kind of Western yeah, thing. Yeah. Uh, and also, I felt like I knew the kid. The kid was very young, the leader of the gang. And uh, I felt like I knew him because that area of London is, you know, very mixed and there's lots of different sorts of people living yeah. very close to each other, lots of different housing, very cheek by jowl. So I thought, I bet I know you. <laughs> I've probably seen you in the park. I'm probably playing the same video games as you are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But yet here we are in this peculiar role-playing game uh, in which I get terrified and you get a Fiat Punto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just start, started thinking, well, what would happen if if... I'd seen Signs, right? The, the movie Signs, which I really liked. And I thought, well, what would, what would have happened? It just came to me that what would happen if a meteor had crashed and a creature jumped out at that moment? Suddenly yeah. I would want them on my side. Yes, of course. Yeah. I would want their skill set. So that's how it started. And I got my punto back in the end. 
about eight months later with a really shit mixtape in it. <laughs> like, insultingly bad music. <laughs> and a wonky passenger seat. And we still drove it for five or six years. <laughs> it's yeah. sort of, you know, but that's... I mean, it's a, it's a very comedian's mindset to for something quite bad to happen and then you, you go, hold on, <laughs> I think there's an amazing idea in this. So, like, in a, in a sense, if that hadn't... If yeah, that hadn't right, happened, like making material out of experiences, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if that hadn't happened... Then you know. I mean, I got my phone stolen when when I when I had a Hitler moustache, uh, and uh, and had to chase this black guy on a bicycle, going stop stop. And no one wanted to help me uh, for some reason, and uh, you know. And then you go, oh, I've got a routine now. <laughs> that, so it was worth the five hundred quid for the phone or whatever it would have yeah. been. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, but yeah, it's sort of weird to be able to turn something. Well, isn't negative. that what they say? When at school they said to me, or you, you know, your writing's better if it's based on personal experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that's true. <laughs> and I like fantasy when it's mixed with reality. All those eighty Spielberg films that they're like half Truffaut films and half ridiculous fantasy, aren't they? Like yeah. the scenes of uh, of that marriage breaking up in Close Encounters are amazing. Those arguments yeah. between. The parents and the kids are like proper, properly great dramatic scenes yeah. combined with crazy UFO chases. I love that <laughs> stuff. Yeah.